Well, hi there students, it's Mr. V. So today this video will function as a companion video to our Linear Perspective video textbook. I'll make sure to include the link down below. And specifically, we're gonna be looking at bounding boxes. So in that big video, which functions as a textbook for my students, we cover what a bounding box is, why we use it, and how to manipulate them in perspective. Today is going to just be kind of a side video on that. So we explore how to do really interesting things with it in terms of like drawing it in the Z axis and taking pieces of it apart. Because in my video textbook, I don't really go too deep. So with that, let's get started. Quick review. A bounding box is used to put a thing into perspective without guessing. It gives us a stabilization effect. It helps us to know exactly where the center of a thing is. It breaks it into quadrants. And we can even break those quadrants into quadrants. And one of the reasons we do this is because foreshortening. Foreshortening, as you know, is the convergence effect where forms are distorted based on where they're at in 3D space. And so whether this letter K is laying on the ground or standing up like a wall, when it is receding away from the eye, all of its angles and sides get really distorted. This naturally occurs and we see it every day. And in order to make our work believable, we need to follow these rules. And so by understanding a bounding box, first, it will help you foreshorten later on. If you do this enough, you'll be able to foreshorten without using a bounding box by using educated, uh, informed, not really guesswork, but decisions. We're gonna look at building a bounding box and playing with it on a one point and then with a two point. So one point, we'll be drawing bounding boxes flat on the ground on the Z axis and then standing upright on the Z axis. And then in two point, we'll be building them uh, the exact same manner, except the major difference that you're gonna see, going back to the difference between one and two point, is that with one point, see there is an X axis, there's flat horizontal lines right? Uh, there are none in two point. Everything is slanted. Everything goes to VP. There's just Y axis verticals and Z axes that go to the right and to the left. So with that, let us begin. So I'm just going to start with a very basic uh, horizon line and our vanishing point here. And I'm going to create my bounding box using the color red and then draw on top of that with a different color later, just to show you in general how to use um, the ruler. So let's start with one vanishing point and we'll draw them standing up. So to draw a bounding box, we first need to have a unit. So I'm going to connect an edge to VP and let's get the unit drawn. Bam, one unit. Next, we need to find center. And so by connecting the corners, that finds center for us right here. And then we connect center to our vanishing point. And so if I want to place another bounding box here, you know, clone this segment, remember we go from the outside corner, inside middle. Again, for how this works, you should be familiar with it already after referencing the video textbook. And after doing that, this new intersection point that we've created has just made a new unit. To make another unit over here, again, for the, the new unit we've created, outside corner, inside middle. Draw through, and where it intersects on the bottom line, that shows the beginning of a new unit. One common mistake I see beginners do is that their Y axes are not perfectly 90 degrees vertical. Uh, make sure that when you're dealing with all of these slants, that your y-axis is 90 degrees perpendicular with horizon each time. And again, you can just create repeating forms this way uh, very, very easily. So um, the same process is used to break things up. So let's say we want to take this portion of the box and move it up here along the z-axis, you know, just clone it and move it up. Well, we take it and we first, again, we need to find center. And that has actually already been done for us a little bit here with this line. So we're using lines that already exist and we have center for this little box. And now remember the direction you wanna go, extend the left, the right, and the middle of that piece upward. And then 
We're going this way, so outside corner, inside middle, draw through, and where that new intersection is, connect it. So the question, another area that beginners get mistaken with is they think they need to flatten it out. Remember, this is along the z-axis, meaning we need to follow along our vanishing point in order to see where to close off the top. If we want to clone this one more time, what I'll do is just extend my sides to make room for it, extend center, and we've already got the left and the right sides of our segment here. So again, outside corner, inside middle, connect to your vanishing point to close off the side. The reason I teach this to students is it really helps students get to the point where they are intuitive, meaning they don't have to think really about what lines line up to what vanishing points. Uh, this really makes it so um, you do it by feeling and you do it correctly. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is just draw on top of it using a different color. Let's do black. And using my brush here, I'm gonna basically just outline the overall shape that I've just built here. So the red would represent junk lines that you will get rid of and the uh, black represents the lines for the form that you intended to create. So one thing we can do here is, you know, let's say you're creating Tetris shapes and those Tetris shapes have segments. Um, what we would do is if we wanted to keep those segments, see they're no longer visible in our shape. If we wanted to keep those, we would just draw along the segments that we created. That is a very good exercise because then if we need to make this form 3D, we have the pieces that we can build with. And I cloned this portion. So we're gonna have segments of different sizes here. And so what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna get rid of my junk lines. We don't need it anymore. And then for fun, let's build this shape in 3D and see what happens. So I'm gonna use red again to show where our marker or our uh, ruler would go. And we're actually building all the segments together. Let's do this in two point perspective. So I'm gonna come over here and you see I have another vanishing point off to the left. So to define the other side of the form, let's just start connecting our corners. I'm also gonna do it for all of the segments. And I'm also going to do it for these ones up here. We're going to have a little bit of a mess showing up, especially in this area. So one of the things that happens when you have more corners and more edges to work with, you get a lot more junk lines. So the good news is, is we get to choose how thick this form is going to be. So in my layer uh, with my black color here, I'm just going to close off the sides of my forms. So this is the top line, all right? So this would start and stop here. And then let's do the same for others. So down here we have um, segments that go across. We need to define the back of it. So I'm gonna connect the back of the form to the opposite VP in order to close it off. Make sure we do that in red. And now we have enough information to finish the rest of the form. So using black, draw along the lines that we need to keep. We're going to keep these segments. And then the question is, how do we close it off here? Do we guess? Do we do it here? Do we do it here? Well, the back corner of that cube is already visible. So all you would do is draw through find this little hidden area and then using black we'll take that and then we get rid of all of our junk lines voila we have just built a shape by working along the z axis all right let's do another one and in this one, I'm gonna lay it flat on the ground, just like a doormat. So again, starting with the color red, 
um, we're going to basically have a form that looks like this. We're going to do it in one point perspective here just to uh, kind of understand the concept. And then we might do it in two point afterward. So uh, we're basically going to have a doormat that, you know, is flat on the ground, kind of like this. So using our grid, we need to make one unit. So define one unit right there. And then in order to continue repeating that unit, let's find center of that unit by connecting the corners and there's center. Again, the benefit with this is that it eliminates any guesswork because foreshortening distorts, oftentimes center is not where we think it would be. So now we are gonna continue repeating down this line. So outside corner, inside middle, draw through. And with this new intersection, I'm going to carry that unit over here. Now remember, we're, we're doing this right now in one point, which means we do have an x axis, we have flat horizontal lines. Let's clone this unit and put it up here. So for this individual unit, outside corner, inside middle, draw through. Here's our new intersection point and x-axis. Let's do it a couple more times. Outside corner, inside middle, draw through, close it off. Outside corner, inside middle, draw through, close it off. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do something very similar to what we did with the shape above, and that is I'm going to replicate an existing portion here. So let's take this, well, actually, let's take this cube, and I'm going to put it over here. So it's already partially sliced in half, so let's continue. So find center within the cube. We're going to be moving it over to the left. And again, this is one point, so we will have an x-axis. So extend center, extend the top, extend the bottom. And now, any one of these corners here would work. Outside corner, inside middle, draw through. And where this new intersection is, we will close it off using the z-axis because it's on the z-axis plane, right? Um, let's do it one more time. I'm going to extend center so I have a little bit more room. Only this time, I'm going to take a portion of it. Let's take this little quadrant here. It's already partially divided in half, so let's find center on it. Extend center, outside corner, inside middle, draw through. And our new intersection will be right here, connect to vanishing point. And again, so you can see we're getting some heavy distortion to the left because the farther away from VP things get, the more stretched out and extreme the angles are. Also, we're getting a very high accumulation of junk lines. And so what I recommend that you guys do as beginners, again, is uh, get yourself to a certain point and then get rid of the junk lines as you work, unless it's an assignment where you need to show your work, where you keep them. But uh, let's see. So let's add, using the color black, let's keep the segments that we want. So we had one large shape here. We extended this shape outward. And we cloned this one little segment. So I'm going to keep that little piece. And now I'm going to include the segments that I had drawn in the finished work. And after this, we junk our junk lines, Ooh, just like that. So subdividing and adding. Now let's do one on the ground in a two-point perspective. So I'm going to delete this. Let's zoom out. And when something lays on the ground in two-point perspective, there is no y-axis. That can be a little confusing for beginners. Everything is slanted. So let's get started. Let's just dive in there. So to build my unit, I'm going to start with a segment here. Again, no verticals, no horizontals, just slants, right? 
And now I have my one unit. Let's take this single unit and clone it over this way to the right. I want to have my vanishing points visible here. So we're going to have to zoom out a little bit so we can see them. So we find center. Now with center found, I mean, we could go this way. We could go, but we're going to go this way. So again, everything goes to the, to the Z axes, whichever one you're going. We're going to be heading to the right. So I'm going to line up center to the right VP. Now let's start cloning. Outside corner, inside middle, draw through. And remember when you draw through and you're doing this, you're not lining this up to any vanishing point. You're just trying to find this intersection by going through these two points. Now we need to close off the side. And to do that, we go from this intersection and we go to the opposite VP, right? Again, no horizontals, no verticals. Let's clone it again over here. Outside corner of this unit, inside middle, draw through. Here's the point where we're looking for. Line it up to the opposite VP to close it off. Do it again. We'll repeat it a couple of times. And as this gets more and more intuitive, you will not need to think so hard when you're drawing forms in 3D. As a matter of fact, you could start a cube by drawing this bottom area, just like it. All right, so let's do something, again, very similar to what we did in the previous one point. Let's take one of these forms and clone it and put it up here. So we're actually going to take this one. So find center of the shape. There's center. We're going to move it this way to the left. So I'm going to extend center to the left VP. And within this unit, let's follow the formula. Outside corner, inside middle, draw through. Here's the little intersection that we were looking for. To close off that unit, go to opposite VP, which will be the right VP. And here is our unit. Let's do it one more time. Outside corner, inside middle, draw through. Here's our new little anchor point. Close off the side by going to VP. And we've got one heck of a mess. So again, the practice comes from being mindful of what you're trying to build and not just kind of going haphazard because again, it's very easy to get confused and lost in these lines. So I'm going to use the color black and let's clean up. So we had a very large form here that went this far down and I extended this segment here. So let's use the side that we're going to keep. And now the segments that we used, let's include those. Again, if you're confused, just remember when you're on the ground like a doormat, there are no y-axis vertical lines and it's two points. So there are no x-axes. We're doing this entirely with slants. So let's delete the junk lines and there we go. So this has been a little side companion video showing how to clone and play around with bounding boxes by working exclusively on the z-axis. I recommend that you do it exclusively on the z-axis in one point first, then it'll make more sense when you go to two point when you have no x and it's just straight up z-axis all the way. So I hope you found this helpful and I look forward to seeing you guys in class. Take care.